Hello, in this video I want to go through some differences between Polar data frame and Pandas data frame and by the end of the video it should be clear to everyone who is the winner in all aspects. Alright, so let's let's jump right into the code. So first, of course, we want to import the libraries. P here will stand for polars, and PD will stand for um, pandas. And um, the first test I want to do is just to read in some data. For your information, this data set is about 22 megabytes. Um, as you can see, it took polar no time, and it took pandas almost no time but it's still some time and it's already much much slower than polars so just in terms of data loading um, the obvious winner is polars now um, when you're doing some data cleaning um, very often if you are dealing with like address or um, mailing address or um, or if you want to understand what's happening uh, like how is the item selling at a zip code level um, then you want to you probably want to clean some zip codes all right so let's take a look at the data so here we have different formats of zip codes well we want, for our purpose, let's say we don't want everything after the hyphen, and we want everything to be five digit, just to standardize zip codes. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, um, we are going to do some data manipulation, in particular stream, mani stream manipulation. So um, if you are working with polars, uh, what you can do is you can say dot with columns and then just putting this long um, expression which tells polars to look at this column it's a string split it into two pieces and after the split it's going to be like a structure of two elements right so access this structure take the field zero which is the first um, part of the structure and that's going to be a string. So now we are going to um, write adjust fill it with zero, right? So that's how you are going to clean this zip code. Let's see. It finishes in no time. And this is a new column. It is still a string. Now let's take a look at um, pandas. How are we going to do this in pandas? Well. The obvious way is to just mimic what, what's happening here, right? Access a column, access it as a string, split, and then there are some parameters, and then, okay, string provides this in, polar, in pandas, so you can access the first element of the split, and then it's going to be a string again, and then you uh, just pad it with some zeros. As you can see, it works. Well, you might be wondering, okay, um, can I also do this? Obviously, you can also do this in pandas. Um, let's take a look. Attribute error. Float object is no attribute split. Well, what's happening? It's saying that x is a float. How? Well, as we can see here, Sure, some post codes, right? Some zip codes can potentially be treated as floats, but it should always be strings, right? Well, no, pandas by default doesn't do that. Um, pandas by default doesn't do that, and this is the re This is a really good reason for not using pandas for data manipulation purposes because. It gets types wrong, but types are very important. Um, there might be some cases, I, I really can't think of any case when 
you want mix type in a column uh, in your data set. I, I really cannot think of any case after three years of working as data science and do, I've done a lot of engineering projects. I've never seen a case where you want mixed types in a column. So, all right. And the way to fix it, of course, to cast X as a string. And then we are good. But the time, obviously, is much slower than polars. And in addition, what are we doing here is essentially a Python call, right? It's essentially a Python call. We are using the split method on string, which is a Python data type. And then we're doing R jest on a Python string. And then we have a list comprehension. So this operation happens entirely in Python. It returns you a list. And we are just saying that, OK, this column is going to be this list, which is allowed in pandas. but you might wonder, okay, can this be faster? Will this be faster if I use entirely pandas built in like stream manipulation API? Sure, right? Just do this. Well, it turns out that when you're using pandas built in stream manipulation API, it's going to be slower. Now you might think, okay, this this time difference makes no, this is just no difference. Well, <laughs> when you are working with five gigabytes, ten gigabytes, fifty gigabytes, hundred gigabytes of data, this will make a huge difference. This will make a huge difference. All right, let's move on. Then filtering. Um, it's very simple to filter. Uh, although this this kind of um, notation may be a little verbose. Um, but you 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 realize that this is actually still pretty simple, all right? Filter pretty fast. I only care about United States, okay? Well, for this data, for this exercise, I only care about United States. Obviously, other countries are important too. And again, speed is terrible for pandas. is terrible in terms of speed, and polars is blazingly fast, okay? Uh, next, now I am going to read in a dim table. Now I'm going to read it once in polars and once in pandas. And this time I'm going to force postal code to always be a stream. So now we are avoiding the issue we had earlier. Right, the issue we had earlier, we having mixed types, which is terrible. Um, okay. And this is what the dim table looks like. We have some postal code, a DMA code, and the name of the DMA. And we are doing just a very simple left drawing. And this is the result. This is the result. Um, nothing too surprising here. Again, speed is, polars is much faster. And you may wonder why is polar so much faster? Well. Partly is that it's written in Rust, um, and the package uh, utilizes all your all the cores on this computer. Um, I have eight cores. No, how many cores do I have? Let's see. I have twelve cores. Okay, so it utilizes all cores, but pandas unfortunately does not do that. Pandas, what pandas does is it vectorizes some operation, but it doesn't parallelize these operation. There's a there's a difference between vectorization and parallelization, which um, you should probably Google by yourself because to delve very deep into that will take way too long. Next, let's look at some grouping. So let's group data by DMA code and DMA name. And I am looking at the number of unique five digit zip codes and the total cells in this DMA. All right, it's very fast. And how about pandas? Well, it's just for this data set, it's reasonably fast, but compared to polars, this is terrible performance and 
this is terrible performance and if you pay attention here it changed the data type of DMA code what I, I did not ask it to change the data type of anything here but it just changed the data type of a column who told you to do that well I don't know I don't know well this may not be an issue if this is your last step in your data processing process but this will be a huge problem when if you want to join to another table on DMA code later okay so now let's just do some statistics just look at some statistics so I believe it's already very clear that the performance of polars is significantly better than pandas um, but how much better well it's about for 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 an operation like grouping taking the sum and a unique it's more than 10 times better for some operations it might be just a little bit better but for some operations which is like for operations like this it can be 10 times better well so let me just summarize what really happening what what have we seen what have we tested in every aspect filtering joining loading data polars is faster and polars enforces a strict type system just like rust the programming language and it avoids the issues when you are processing the column now you are confident that the column you are processing is a string now you don't have to deal with mixed types anymore so in terms of debugging actually polars is also better because of the strict type enforcement every column has to be a, a single type well and there's actually one more advantage uh, for polars why what, what is it well remember at the end we see we saw that pandas converted DMA code to floats this <laughs> so this pen so that we when we are doing when we are doing a lot of many data manipulations consistency is a key right DMA code originally DMA code was an integer but somehow after grouping it's now a float how can that be this will break a lot of data pipelines if you're not careful and if you're a beginner this type of issue is the hardest to debug now you may wonder why are you still learning pandas well it's probably easier to learn which I doubt I really doubt I, I think people are not really transitioning because they're used to one tool and they, they are not really trying other tools which is you know which is pretty common in almost all companies well are there any other data frame tools well obviously there are um, we have a few more packages we have Dask and we have PySpark well I'm not really comparing these two packages to polars at this moment although it will be interesting to do a comparison but I want to refer you to the documentation page of polars and there you can find a benchmark of performance benchmark of polars performance against the other um, data frame packages and you will see that polars performs better than Dask and better than PySpark PySpark performs better than Dask 
So the reason I am grouping Dask and PySpark together is that they are built to be to perform distributed computing tasks. Although nowadays no one really uses Dask. Almost all big um, companies are using PySpark. And I am grouping pandas by itself because it's probably outdated technology. It's probably outdated technology. Now, what is the biggest difference between PySpark and Polars? Well, if a single computer can process the data, then most likely Polars will be at least as fast as PySpark and sometimes even faster. And Polars might use less memory. Why? Well, it's because PySpark is Scala backend and Scala is, well, Scala code will compile to bytecode and the bytecode will run in a Java virtual machine. And it is well known that the garbage collector for Java virtual machine will consume a lot more memory. On the other hand, Polars is written in Rust and Rust doesn't have any garbage collector. And if you do your research, Rust is one of the most memory efficient, memory safe language out there. Now, if you are paying attention, you should know that I just said, if a single computer can process the data, then Polars will be at least as fast as PySpark and sometimes faster. The catch is on a single computer. Now, if you are running a huge job on a cluster, that is the only time PySpark will be better. Well, it's because that kind of data processing pipeline, that kind of infrastructure, only, only PySpark supports that kind of environment. Only PySpark supports that kind of environment. There is no alternative tool right now to do big data manipulation, big data transform in a cluster. There's no other tool than PySpark at this moment, which is quite unfortunate. Okay, and if you, if you already know PySpark, then the notation, the Polar's notation, you should already be familiar with the Polar's notation. Concepts like with column here and concepts like filter, you should be very familiar with these concepts already if you know PySpark. So in fact, Polar's um, API is, I, I don't want to say it, it mimics PySpark. It, there's really no such relationship. The, the naming convention, at least, maybe. The naming convention mimics PySpark, but um, it uses um, snake case instead of camel case. Camel case is really uh, the Java convention and Rust is uh, snake case is really the, the Rust convention. So there's that difference. In the future, I'll probably do a video comparing Polars and PySpark in detail. Um, I think for this video, um, we did compare Polars and Pandas. I really cannot see a situation where Pandas is better than Polars. And I introduced a little bit about like the, the capabilities of each data frame and in which situation should you use which tool. Um, hope you, hopefully you learned something from this video and thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.